Hi, Josh here. In this video, I'm going to talk about torque or current bandwidth in the Modius controller and a new feature that lets you easily select a specific bandwidth with no hand tuning required. Most FOC-based motor controllers have a multi-stage control law, where in the innermost stage is one that accepts a torque or current request and uses a PI controller to select the voltage or PWM value to achieve that current. When designing that PI controller, you need to pick the constant factors that control the proportional and integrative term. If they are too large, the system can create audible noise, and if very much too large, the controller can become unstable. However, if they are too small, then the response to changes in either commanded torque or external disturbances will be reduced. The torque bandwidth of the controller is a rough measure of how quickly the system can respond to either of those things, either changes in the commanded torque or external disturbances. It is usually measured in hertz because the response is often plotted in the frequency domain. A convenient rule of thumb for a linear controller is that the 90% rise time, the time it takes for response to a step function to go from 10% to 90%, is 0.35 divided by the frequency in hertz. Thus, higher bandwidth means the controller can change the applied torque faster. With the Modius controller to date, the gains for this controller were set in a decidedly ad hoc fashion. From the factory, the firmware came with a set of defaults which had a relatively low control bandwidth on most motors the user might decide to connect. If you wanted higher bandwidth than that, you had to go into TView and manually fiddle with settings. Needless to say, probably not very many people bothered. To improve on this, I'll start by covering a little bit of the theory behind what works out to be a very simple algorithm in the end. To start with, we will model the controller and motor in the frequency domain using the Laplace transform. To be honest, my college age memories of how to do this from first principles were 20 years rusty, but fortunately, there is a lot of material on the internet to refresh our memory. For the motor, we can model it as a resistor in series with an inductor. The voltage to current transform for that block can be written as 1 over R plus L times S. The controller, a PI controller, can be written as KP times S plus KI. The combined system is a sequence block diagram with feedback like so. And the rule here is that the transforms in series multiply and with feedback it is F over 1 plus F. Combining those two rules gives us the following equation. We can apply some algebraic simplification, and then it works out to this. Now this transfer function would let us design an arbitrary second order system response. However, to make things simpler, there is a particular relationship between the KP and KI terms that if we restrict ourselves to, then the system response is a first order function, and therefore a bit easier to reason about. In this form, the 3 dB frequency can be read from the formula as KP over L and substituting that in yields the following two equations. It's that simple. Now, if you are familiar with the Modius calibration sequence, it has always automatically determined the resistance of the phase windings during the calibration sequence. What it hasn't done is measure the inductance, so we'll have to tackle that now. An inductor is just an energy storage device where the rate of change of current is proportional to the voltage across its terminals. So an easy way to measure the inductance is to apply a fixed voltage across the terminals and measure how fast the current changes. Fortunately, Modius has the ability to apply a voltage to the motor and to measure the current, so we're most of the way there. The one twist on this is that to improve the quality of the measurement, the measurement is actually conducted by applying a small voltage square wave to the motor. Then the rate of current change is measured at each time step, multiplied by the sign of the voltage, and added to an accumulator. That way we can get a pretty accurate indication of the inductance, despite noise in the current measurement. With that in hand, we get a nice audible tone out of the motor at the square wave frequency, and we can see the integrator wind up. For the MJ5208, I double checked this measured inductance with the spark alligator clip of death method. I attached a current sense shunt in line to a scope, connected up power with an alligator clip, and thus captured the waveform from zero current up to saturation. It matched, so I think the automated square wave approach is working as intended. 
With all that math and busy work behind us, if you have a recent version of Modius firmware and Modius tool, it will automatically select appropriate KI and KP gains for a bandwidth of your choosing. If you don't specify anything, the default is 50 Hz, but you can change that at will on the command line. Let's issue the appropriate Modius tool command and watch it go at it. For this test, I have created a debugging version of the firmware which emits the D-axis current scaled from minus 4 to 4 amps onto the DAC debug pad. I have the oscilloscope connected to that, which lets us monitor the current at the full 40 kHz control loop, which otherwise isn't possible to observe just over CAN FD. Let's start by commanding a D and Q current of 0, 0. Then we'll arm the scope and command a step to 4 amps on the D-axis. That captured a nice trace of the current waveform, which we can use the measure function to see that the 90% rise time is around 7 milliseconds, which is about 0.35 divided by 50 hertz. We'll do one more experiment where we set the bandwidth to 200 hertz. And do the same D and Q current step. Now we can use the measure function to see that the rise time is now around 2 milliseconds, which is about right for 200 hertz. We'll do a final test at 1 kilohertz bandwidth. And now when we power on the motor we can hear a much louder audible squeal, which is one of the downsides of using high bandwidth gains. We also see that the rise time is around 300 microseconds, which is about what we would expect. Thanks for watching. You may find that you need to update the firmware in your Modius controller or your Modius tool installation using PIP before you're able to access the new calibration sequence. Happy building.